What's going on everybody? Sharpie360 here. Stranded Deep is an ocean survival island crafting game. It's also a lot of fun, but can be kind of difficult to get started due to the minimalist nature of the game. So I put together a list of tips to help you on your playthrough and journey to escape Pacifica. So let's get started. And these tips aren't in any type of order of importance, more so just relevance to each other. First tip is utilize the watch. The watch is your lifeline in Stranded Deep. You got three screens. This screen shows you what your health is, your food level, your water level, and SPF level. When the SPF bar is all the way full, it means you're good to go. When it's all the way empty, it means you need to find shade because you're getting sunburnt and gonna get sunstroke. This one, if you have any status ailments or if you're healthy, it'll show up here. And this one will show you your stats. So the first one is hunting, second one is cooking, third one is harvesting, fourth one is physical, and then the fifth one is building. Some of the in-game performance of your character depends on what these stat levels are at, and some of the building options are only available in the higher levels of building as well. Tip number two, the ocean current flows south. So if you don't have a compass and you need to figure out which way is which and you have something buoyant, you can just toss it into the water and it will eventually start to drift. This works for your raft or the life raft or even barrels. You can see it's floating that way. And yeah, it's moving south. So a good indicator. Also the sun will always rise in the east and set in the west. Same with the moon. <laughs> so if you ever have difficulty figuring out direction or you're playing with the no compass playthrough there you go tip number three the cartographer is actually the current game map so if you come in here and zoom out you can see the whole ocean area with all the different islands and pois that you might need to visit you can also notice that the north facing arrow is actually facing northeast so always be aware of that when you're looking at this for reference tip number four Bring some empty chests with you when you're going to harvest resources because then you have a bunch more inventory space to bring stuff back with. You just drop them, fill them up, and pick them up as they're full. Tip number five. When harvesting palm fronds, it's better to just collect the heads and store them in a chest than to break them down into the palm frond individuals and put them in a chest. Because you can store five times as many in one chest. So in this one, you can see that I have a full chest of palm fronds and I have a total of 20 of them. And in this one, I have a total of 20 palm frond heads for a total of 100. Tip number six, when it comes to storage and harvesting logs, it's quicker to just store the logs as is versus break them down into sticks because you can only store up to four sticks in one slot anyways. So it saves time to just pop them in as a log and then break them down if need be because you can use the logs for a lot more stuff than just breaking them down into sticks. Tip number seven, Always try to gather more resources than you think you're going to need, and if you see a wooden container, even if it's empty or doesn't have things in it that you want, grab it because it's good for storage, and eventually you can just kind of stockpile stuff like this. And one of those things will be a label maker, so you can name the crates and see what stuff is in there from a look. Also, things don't despawn, so if you have a bunch of stuff that you don't want, you can create a junk pile or discard it in the sea. Tip number eight. If you kill an animal but don't have the room to store the resources, you can just leave it as is and it won't spoil. Meat spoils cooked or uncooked after 24 hours. Same with the fruit. Tip number nine. Never eat spoiled or uncooked meat. Never eat two or more fruit. And never eat or drink two or more coconut. Doing so will inflict some sort of negative ailment on you and affect your health significantly. So don't do that, make sure it's fresh, make sure you don't overeat, and make sure it's cooked. Tip number 10, a smoker allows you to smoke meat and smoked meat never spoils. So if you have some raw meat, you just put it on the smoker, grab some from the other one since it hasn't spoiled yet, drop them on there, and it does take considerably longer for the meat to get smoked. It will cook and then it will smoke after that, but it is well worth the wait because it will not spoil. So stock up that way. Tip number 11, Spoiled potatoes can be used in this fuel still and also still be planted. In fact, all fruit can be planted into a farming plot if they're spoiled, so make sure to do that. Tip number 12. The only two plants that will consistently grow back on islands are yucca trees and palm saplings, and those both will provide you with fibrous leaves. Tip number 13. 
palm saplings will never turn into palm trees, no matter how long you wait. They won't do it, so just harvest it. Tip number 14. Make an antidote as soon as possible. To make an antidote, you need to first make a flask with the coconut and a lashing, and then you need to make it with a pee pee plant, which can be found on the edges of the islands. So one pee pee plant and a coconut flask, and you got yourself an antidote. This is used in case you get bit by a snake, step on a sea urchin, or happen to bump into one of those lionfish out there. Tip number 15. You can hold up to four of the same tool in each backpack slot. So you can see here I have four different axes and looks like they're all pretty low on durability. And then four hammers. So that makes it nice for making sure that if you are ever out and about you don't run out of one of your main tools that you use all the time. Tip number 16. Items will show their condition in the backpack with a number percentage and a whitish overlay over top of it. You can see this one has 28.5%. And then three, that white overlay is virtually non-existent. For the knife, you see 100%, 100%, 100%. And for items like food and water bottles, it also depicts the servings as well. Tip number 17. Some items that you can craft, like the plank station, require actual tools to be used as a crafting ingredient. So for instance, this plank station, it uses a refined axe as one of the materials, and what you want to do is just wait until you have used up all the durability of that item. So you can see the refined axe in my inventory has only 0.8% durability left, and I would want to use this one if I needed to make another plank station. Tip number 18. Crude spears are much more efficient and cost effective than refined spears. Refined spears will do double the damage. They're less abundant because a crude spear only takes one stick and the refined spear requires a crude spear, leather strips, and a stone tool. So much more expensive. So only use them sparingly and for certain boss fights. Tip number 19. Clay is underwater. And it looks just like a rock, but a little bit browner. Oh, there's a shark right here. Of course, that's what clay looks like and you need a pickaxe to get it. So make sure you have one of those before you go swimming. Tip number 20. The fishing pole is a leisure item. Don't use it for fishing, unless you're just trying to kill time. Use the fishing spear instead. Tip number 21. If you find yourself having to fight a shark to clear out one of the shipwrecks, try to lure it into the shallows of the island as this area right here. It'll give you a little bit more control and you're closer to the surface and you don't have to worry about getting stuck down too far. Plus it's easier to drag it to the shore when you're done. Tip number 22. Whale sharks are friendly. And they're not gonna attack you even if you're swimming in the water next to one. You might even see one following up alongside the raft at times when you're going along the ocean. Tip number 23. Sharks and storms can't damage your raft. So sometimes you might see a shark chasing your raft as you're sailing along and it might hit the bottom of the raft and make a thud noise, but it's not gonna actually damage anything and it won't actually knock you off. If you ever get caught out in a storm, the raft itself won't capsize and it won't break apart or anything like that. So you don't have to worry about tipping over. Tip number 24. Container shelves can be built on raft sections. Which is really nice because all of your containers fit snugly on there and they won't fall off your raft and it's easy to transport them. So utilize the heck out of that one. Tip number 25. You only need one of each type of vehicle component and a roll of duct tape to craft a raft motor. So don't bother stocking up on too many of them because you'll only need to make one motor or two at the most. You can only use one at a time. Tip number 26. There's no penalty for not sleeping, and you cannot sleep during the day. It helps pass time, but feel free to work through the night. Tip number 27. Building your base in a more unnaturally looking way will help it stand out from farther distances. Building it super tall, or in a big weird shape that you can easily pick out from a distance or silhouette in the middle of the night. Tip 28. When picking an island to make a base, Pick one that has some natural resources that'll respawn, such as boars and crabs. Also, hang out a couple of days to see how frequently it rains on that island, because that'll help you a lot in the farming, keeping that hydrated as well. Tip 29. Last but not least, the flare gun is a light source. 
It will not help you escape Pacifica. You won't be able to flag down any airplanes. You'll just be wasting your flares. It worked really well at night though. So just shoot it up there and you got a couple hours worth of good light. But don't expect a plane or a ship to f be flagged down. Because that never got added into the game, sadly. Tip number 30. Remember to have fun. Stranded Deep is an awesome game. And you'll probably have to start over once or twice. But it's always a fun experience every time. Okay, well that's my list of tips for beginners. If you're just starting out on Stranded Deep, that's awesome. This game is a lot of fun. I love the minimalist vibe to it. I hope this list really helps you out in your pursuit to escape Pacifica and take out the massive sea monsters out there lying in the depths of the ocean. So if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so. Go follow me on Rumble because that's where I'll be live streaming whenever I get time to do some gameplay stuff. Got a review coming out for this game pretty soon and I'm looking forward to that project coming out as well. So thanks again for watching and until next time, sharp out.